Hello everyone. Good morning. Am I audible? Yeah, perfect. Okay. So let's uh, begin with the session guys. Uh, okay. So in yesterday's session, we just spoke about something called as uh, exceptions. You know, we just kick started with something called as exception handling. Okay. So that is going to be a very, very important concept going ahead. Okay. So let us try to discuss all those topics in a beautiful manner here. Okay. Right. Okay. So let us try to discuss all of those topics one by one, one by one. And then go ahead with today's session here. Okay. So now here. Uh, okay. So in yesterday's session, what did we talk about guys? We spoke about something called as exception handling. Okay. Exception handling over here. Clear. So what is exception? What is an error? We spoke about all those, right? Okay. So how do you answer it over here? First of all, let us try to understand what is an error here. So error is nothing but as I told you, it is a mistake or an interruption. Okay. What is an error? Error is a mistake or an interruption which will occur during execution of a program. Okay. And that might occur during compile time due to syntax mistakes and run time due to executing a class without the main method. So therefore, whenever we get an error, what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to debug. Why? Because we cannot handle an error here. We are supposed to debug. Clear? Then what is an exception? Sir, exception is nothing but, okay, it's an event or an interruption, okay, which will stop the execution of a program. Once some event or interruption will occur, you know, the execution of the program will stop. Okay. As soon as it stops here, the below lines of code will not get executed. Okay. So that's a huge problem here. So what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to handle an exception and the process of handling an exception is called as exception handling. And how do we handle an exception with the help of try and with the help of catch block here. So if at all you need to handle an exception, we handle it with the help of try and catch block. Clear everyone here. Okay. So this is what we are supposed to understand when we talk about exception handling. Okay. So what is exception handling guys? So firstly, you should know what is error. What is an error guys? And the reason I am repeating it so many times, okay, revising it so many times is because exceptions and collections are the most important topic you will ever come across in any kind of interviews here. Be it a startup, be it an MNC, tier one, tier two, tier three, any type of companies here, they're going to ask you questions on exceptions and collections here. Okay. So that is the reason I'm revising it so many times here. I want you all to be strong enough in the, that topic here. I don't want you all to screw up this topic. Okay. Because I'm taking a lot of efforts here. I'm trying to do it. I want the equal support from your side. Okay. So what is an error? Error is a mistake or an interruption which will occur during the execution of a program that is during compile time due to syntax mistakes and run time whenever we execute a class without main method and errors cannot be handled. We have to debug. Okay. What is an exception? Exception is nothing but it's an event or an interruption. It's an event or an interruption which will stop the execution of a program. Some blockage, okay, some blockage, a blockage or event will occur wherein the execution of the program will stop. Abrupt termination, okay, and the below lines of code will not get executed. So we are supposed to handle an exception, okay. So the process of handling an exception is called as exception handling. And how do we typically handle an exception with the help of try and catch block here? Clear? Understood? So if they ask you the simple difference between an error and exception, you will just tell. <coughs> Sorry. Error is an runtime interruption which cannot be handled. Exception is an runtime interruption which can be handled. If at all they ask the difference in an interview, 
just tell this small point here what is error is an runtime interruption which cannot be handled whereas exception is an runtime interruption which can be handled clear so this is all about error and exception here and then we spoke about what is try and catch block right so try and catch block are like couples okay they have to always be together here so if there is try and there should be catch if there is catch there should be try and try and catch block are used to handle an exception so the lines whichever gives an exception write it in the catch or try block and the solution write it in the catch block the critical lines which might give an exception write it in try block and the solution if at all an exception occurs what are we supposed to do write it within the catch block and catch block will get executed only when an exception occurs not all the time okay and then we saw one try block having multiple catch blocks okay and the super class exception should be the last catch block once an exception occurs what will happen internally so all of those i've done okay so i have uploaded video also okay so go watch it once okay so you'll get the clarity okay so if at all you want to get to know it about it okay so this is what we have discussed in next session right not this this is what we discussed see we spoke about exception we spoke about error and how do we handle an exception the syntax for it and then yeah all the programs here okay so these are the few things which we have done in yesterday session so in today's session here we are going to talk about a couple of important methods and i also told you throwable is the supermost class in exception hierarchy under that we come across error and exception here under error all the exceptions are all classes and they are all the subclasses of exception class okay now <clears throat> i go back to my eclipse here and i have created a project called as exception handling under src let me create package okay let me create a package and the package name is i will give it as org okay so project got created package got created over here and now let me create okay one class here control n and now tell me i will create a class called as demo what is the class name here i am going to create a class by the name called as demo here okay and should i have main method within the class here yes i should have main method within the respective class here clear so yes i do have the main method over here okay now here guys okay when i tell 10 divided by 0 okay will we get an exception okay uh, do we get one exception here yes or no okay when i try to divide a number by 0 uh, do we get an exception your answer is big s here okay so now when i execute it over here okay we get an exception and that exception is nothing but arithmetic exception why because we are dividing a number by zero sir here so obviously we will get an exception here called as exception in thread main and the exception name is arithmetic exception so we are supposed to handle it okay see here what is the message i get here clearly observe the message exception in thread main it is telling exception as occurred in the main method and the exception is arithmetic exception and the line number is 7 and we are dividing by 0 that's the reason we are getting an exception so we got this complete information so i will just print it down over here okay i'll just print it down over here clear this is the output we are getting there so what are we supposed to do we are supposed to handle it sir try i will write the lines which gives an exception in the try block and the solution has to be given within the catch block here now guys imagine assume i do not know the exception name assume i do not know the exception name so what can i do in the catch block here okay let me know here what can i do in the catch block if i do not know the exception name here sir if you do not know the exception name you can directly write the super class exception as exception e here why because when i write exception e the super class exception handler will handle all the types of exception if i write it as arithmetic exception only arithmetic exceptions could be handled if i write null pointer exception only null pointer exceptions could be handled 
but when i write it as super class exception e you know all the type of exceptions could be handled that is it could be caught okay now here we have a predefined method okay in the throwable class okay so that method is called as e is the object reference and we know what happens when i tell 10 divided by 0 an object of arithmetic exception will get created and that object is thrown and that is caught by the reference e which is of type exception here object of arithmetic exception was created that object is thrown and that object is caught by the catch block with the reference e so when i tell e dot we have a method called as print stack trace in the throwable class okay we have a print stack trace method in a throwable class which is inherited in all subclasses so now when i execute the program over here when i execute the program look at the output what i get here so when i execute the program over here i get the output as uh, the exception name okay the the reason because the exception is occurring and the line number so it simply means the control will start from the main method the control gets into the try block when until 10 divided by 0 an exception will occur immediately the control will go to the catch block the exception is caught when I tell e dot print stack trace, the method itself is telling print stack trace, meaning it is printing whatever is happening in the stack. We all know that the execution of a program happens inside a stack. When I tell e dot print stack trace, it is printing the complete information about the exception here. That is nothing but see here. The exception is handled, guys. Okay, that's the reason. If you want to cross check here, see. I'll write it as sys out start. Okay, for my your understanding, see, I write it as start and I write it as sys out, sys out end over here. So now when I execute the Java program here, look at the output what I get here. Start. Okay. Uh, print e dot print stack trace meaning I'm getting the complete information about the exception and end here. If my complete program is getting executed, it means your exception was handled. Correct. If the exception was not handled, you will never ever get this output. Correct. So your execution starts from the main method. Start will get executed. The control gets into the try block. 10 divided by 0 meaning an exception will occur. Then exception is handled by the catch block. And when I tell e dot print stack trace, it is printing the complete information about the exception. Print means it's printing. Stack trace meaning whatever is happening in the stack that is going to be printed here. That is, it's going to print the exception name, the message about the exception and the line number. And then what is the last line? End here. Got it. If an exception was occurred, okay, and it was not handled here, your program would have got terminated. Okay. And your output will be exception in thread main, right? Since you have handled the exception, you will get this expected output here. Got it. So this is what we are supposed to understand when we talk about the expected data here. Clear? This is all about the entire process here. Got the clarity? Okay. This is all about it, guys. Okay. This is what we are supposed to understand here. So what is the job of print stack trace method? The job of print stack trace method is used to print the complete information about the topic here. See here. So this is a predefined method. Okay. Print stack trace is a predefined method. Where is it present? It is present in the throwable class here. Okay. And what am I supposed to do here? Imagine here. Okay. In real time, what happens, you know, when I do not know the exception name, you know, I will just handle the exception using super class exception. Okay. I repeat in real time here. If I'm not sure of the exception here, I just write the super class exception and I, I handle it. But as a developer here, I need to know the complete information about the exception here, right? I want the complete information about the exception. So now I tell print stack trace method. Once I execute the program here, I'll get this output. So what does it mean here? It is printing the complete information about the exception. That is when it will print stack trace, it is used to print the complete information about the exception here. When I tell complete information, it means the line number, the message about the exception and the name of the exception which is occurring over here. Clear? 
So similarly, similarly, wait for it. Control N. I will create one more class called as test class. Okay. And I will have my main method over here. I will have what? I will have my main method over here. So sys out when I tell 10 divided by 5. Okay. I am trying to divide a number by 5 here. When I execute it over here, I will get the output as 2. Correct? No. 2 5s are 10. I mean 5 2s are 10. I get the output as 2 here. No errors, nothing. Your program started, executed, terminated. No problems, nothing. Okay. But similarly, if I try to divide a number by 0 here, I'll get a huge exception. See? Read out the exception. What is it telling here? Exception has occurred in the main method. See? Exception has occurred in thread main means. Exception has occurred in the main method. And the exception name is arithmetic exception. And the message is divide by 0. And the line number is 7 here. This is the message we are getting. I mean, this is the exception. Meaning your program got terminated in between only. Why? Because exception occurred. No. See, if you want to cross check, see guys, okay, it's very, very simple. Okay, don't try to complicate here. It's a very, very simple topic here. The more you try to complicate, the more difficult it's going to become for you all. Okay, so when I tell start 10 divided by 0 and end, see, start got executed. When I tell 10 divided by 0, immediately an exception will occur and your program will get terminated. Got the clarity? So, exception occurred meaning your program got terminated. So, what is the output you are getting? Exception got occurred over here. So, what are we supposed to do if we get an exception over here? We are supposed to handle it. How will you handle it? Try, sir. We are supposed to write try, sir. And after that, we are supposed to write cat, sir. Okay. Imagine, we are not sure of the exception name. Just assume, okay. You know, when I divide a number by zero, we will get arithmetic exception. Okay, agreed. But assume, you are not aware of the exception, Appa. What will you do then? Sir, if I do not know the exception name, simply I will write it as super class exception handler. That is nothing but exception. One reference here, I can give it as E. I can give any reference name. I'll just give it as E here. So now, here, my requirement is, I want to know what is the reason? What is that small message? Why am I getting that exception? Therefore, we all know getter and setter method long back we did here. Similarly, we have a predefined method called as get message method. E dot, we have a predefined method called as get message method here. When I tell E dot get message over here, when I execute the program here, see what is the output we are getting. See, I'll just write it for my understanding. Start is the beginning point. Okay. And end is the end point here, right? So now when I execute the Java program, see what is happening? Start, divide by zero, end here. We are getting this output here. Sir, how did we get this output, sir? Simple. Your execution starts from main method now. Start will get executed. So the control gets into the try block, sir. When I tell 10 divided by zero, exception will occur. And the exception is caught by the catch block. When I tell e dot get message, it is giving me the small message about the reason why the exception is occurring. We are trying to divide a number by zero. Okay, we are trying to divide a number by zero here. That's the reason we are getting that exception here. Okay, so we have handled that exception and end will get printed here. So if you do not handle the exception, you will get the output as exception in thread main, java dot lang dot arithmetic exception, divide by zero, blah, 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 everything it will get printed. But if you just want the small message about the exception, right, you will just tell e dot get message. Okay, when I tell get message, it will give me the small message about that particular exception. Clear? So this is get message method. Similarly, when I tell print stack trace over here, it is giving me the complete information about the exception. Get message will get only the small exception, I mean message here, but print stack trace will give me the complete information about the exception. See, the exception name, the message, and the line number. So it's telling line number 11 is causing the exception, and that is arithmetic exception, and the reason we are getting it is we are dividing a number by zero here. So 
these two are the important methods which we have in throwable class here. So what are those two important methods? Print stack trace method and get message method. Print stack trace will give the complete information about the exception, including the line number, the message, and the exception name. Whereas get message method will just return the small message about the exception here. What was the reason the exception occurred? It will just give the small message. So that is the job of print stack trace who prints the complete information and get message is returning. So therefore we are trying to print it over here. Got it? So this is what we are supposed to understand. Clear? And we can also do it in one more way. When I tell e dot get message over here, okay, that will return a small message about the exception. No, I will store it into a variable called as message. And what will be the data type here? It's string. Okay. And here when I try to print the message, I will get the data here. Even this can be done here. So when I try to execute it, see, divide by zero, divide by zero. So when a method is returning something, what will you do here? When a method is returning something, sir, I will store it into a variable and print that variable. Okay. If not, I can directly print it in a single line. So you can either make use of one line of approach or two lines. Call the method, it will return something, store it into a variable and the data type is string because it's a string message here and then I will print the variable here. This is all about print stack trace and get message method. Print stack trace prints complete information, get message will get the small, inf I mean small uh, uh, information about the exception. That's it. Clear everyone here? Okay. So now tell me, do you have any confusions in get message and, uh, you know, and uh, print stack trace method? Do you have any confusions here? You got the clarity? As a developer, if I want the complete information, I will use print stack trace method. If I just want one small message, get message method. That's it. Clear? Very good. Very good. Okay. Perfect. So we are done with the first half of the session wherein we understood two important methods here. Now the next topic which we are going to talk about is something called as finally block here. Okay. Sir, what is this finally block, sir? Okay. I will tell you here. Okay. What is this finally block? I will tell you over here. Okay. Now, okay. What is the job of finally block? Okay. It's very, very simple here. Okay. See here. Now I'll give you one scenario guys. Okay. We are going to talk about something called as finally block here. Okay. Now here, imagine you have a Java program. This is your Java program and this is your database over here. This is Java program. Just a moment. And this is your database. Okay. This is your Java program and this is your database here okay now you have some information in your java program okay you have some content okay you have some uh, data information in your java program so that information you have to store it in your database so what will you first do here sir first i will open the connection sir okay i will open the database connection sir then I will slowly store the data into the database, sir. And then after I'm done with the job, sir, I have to close the database connection, sir. Why? See here. What will you do here? You imagine you have a safe locker here, okay? You have a locker at your house, okay? You want to store some money in that locker. What will you do? You will open the locker, okay? You put some money and you will close the locker. So this is the process, no? Okay? So now imagine over here, okay, imagine over here, your requirement is you have some information in a Java program and you have to store it in your database. So you open the locker, open the database. Now, unfortunately, you are not able to store it. Okay, unfortunately, something happened over here wherein you are not able to store it. But even during those scenario, you have to close the database connection here, okay? If you have opened the database connection, it doesn't matter if you have stored the data or not stored the data, you have to close the database connection, clear? So you have a safe locker at, uh, at your house. 
you open it now now nowadays we don't use it i believe i'm just telling imagine you open the locker okay now you want to store the money unfortunately here you open it but you did not store the money here but even now you have to close the locker no yes or no here so that is why we are supposed to close the uh, database even if we are able to store or not here meaning some set of instructions here has to get executed all the time irrespective of what happens even if you are able to store the data or not store the data here you are supposed to close the database connection why if you do not close the database connection here there is some confidential data in the database what if someone will try to manipulate with the data here so if you have opened the database connection you have to close it mandatorily if you have opened the locker here okay you have to close it mandatorily so some instructions some important instructions costly resources has to be closed all the time so those set of instructions which has to get executed all the time has to be returned within the finally block why the instructions whichever you write it within the finally block will get executed all the time irrespective of what happens even if an exception occurs or even if an exception does not occur the finally block will get executed all the time clear so this is the job of a database here now imagine now imagine one more simple example i'll give you okay simple simple example this is your java program okay so you have some data in your java program here okay what is it this is your java program you have some data here and the extension of all java programs are dot java okay and this is your file okay and the extension of file we can take it as a text file okay so now your requirement is sir in my java program i have some data okay that data has to be stored into a file and the extension is dot java and this is dot text file so firstly what will you do you will slowly 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 open the data i mean file connection you have to open the file okay after that you have to store the data okay what are we supposed to do we are supposed to store the data once after storing here i have to close the file here why because in file here i would have stored some private data confidential data highly secure data here correct so therefore i have to close it so first step you will open the file connection now you will store the data into the file and you will close the file connection step 1 step 2 step 3 now imagine here scenario number 2 first you opened you stored you closed very good now you open the file connection but unfortunately okay something happened okay wherein you opened it but you were not able to close it okay you were not able to store it but even then you need to close no why because file might have some confidential data secure data that shouldn't be manipulated so if you have opened the file connection you have to close it irrespective of what happens okay why because if i don't close it someone might manipulate hack and do whatever they want okay so those critical lines which has to get executed all the time irrespective of exception occurs or not those important lines should get executed all the time okay those instructions has to be written within the finally block why if i the content which i write okay the statements which i write in the finally block will get executed all the time irrespective of whatever happens in my program the finally block will get executed all the time so this is called as finally block so what is finally block here just read out the definition what i have here the set of instructions which has return in the finally block will get executed all the time okay see the set of instructions which has to be executed all the time has to be written in the finally block why because it gets executed okay the set of instructions which are very very essential important which has to get executed all the time write it in the finally block okay so in simple terms finally block is a block of code which gets executed all the time even if an exception occurs or not here this is the syntax for finally block okay and i will show it to you okay see here example 
I will have a class called as finally block example. Okay, I'll just rename it. I have to just add it a L over here and just tell rename compilation to that. And I will have my main method. Okay, so now see here you will have sys out for my example it is start and at the end it is end here. Okay, start and end over here. Okay, now, now here after this end, entire process over here. Okay, see here what I'll do here is sys out. I'll tell 10 divided by 0. What will be your output? Sir, common sense, sir. I have done this several times, sir. Start exception, your program will get terminated. See, start exception, your program got terminated. So, what are we supposed to do? Handle, sir. Handle. Okay, I will handle. Try block. I will write the lines which gives an exception and try block. Solution within the catch block. So, I'll write it as arithmetic exception E. Okay, and I'll give it as invalid. Okay, denominator. Okay, and then here I will also have some finally block over here. So, I'll just write it as inside finally block. Okay, I'll just write it as inside finally block. Okay, this is all about my expected data. This is the structure we follow. Try, catch, finally, try, catch, finally. Okay, so now what will be the output here, sir? Start will get executed, sir. The control gets into the try block, sir. Exception will occur, sir. 10 divided by 0 exception will occur, sir. And the exception will be caught by the catch block, sir. Why? Because it's arithmetic exception, sir. Invalid denominator will get executed, sir. And finally block will get executed all the time, sir. So inside finally block gets executed and end here. So now here your complete program got executed. See, start invalid denominator inside finally block end. Your complete program got executed, including the finally block. Okay. Now imagine you are handling the exception called as class cast exception. Okay. And you will just write it as invalid. What will be the output over here? What will be the output guys? Any idea? Any any idea? Basic idea here? It's very simple. Sir, start will get executed. The control gets into the try block. 10 divided by 0 means an exception will occur. And will it be caught by the catch block here? Will it be caught by the catch block here? No. Why? Because sir, exception occurring is arithmetic. But you are trying to handle class cast exception. That's not possible here. Catch block will not get executed. Therefore, exception will occur. See, your exception will occur. So, if you could closely observe over here. So, I'm getting it in the mismatch way. Don't worry about it. So, here, see, start. Okay, exception occurred and your program got terminated. But whatever you have written in the finally block got executed. Right? So, end did not get executed. If you could closely observe the entire program output here, end did not get executed. Why? Because you have not handled with the help of suitable try and catch block. Okay. You have just handled within random try and catch block, which is not possible at all. So your program will terminate. But whatever you have written in the finally block will get executed mandatorily. That is what I just wanted to tell here. Got the clarity here. So what is finally block here? The set of instructions, whichever we write it in the finally block, will get executed all the time. So the costly resources, which I told, like closing the database connection, while closing the file connection, has to be written within the finally block. Because that should get executed all the time, irrespective of exception will occur or not here. This is all about, okay, finally block over here. Okay, and we have a couple of questions here, see. In Java, can we have nested try and catch block here? Okay, it's possible here. Okay, it's possible to have nested try and catch block here. Okay, so what is that, sir? How can we have nested try and catch block, sir? See, try. This is open curly braces close, and I can have okay, try and catch block over here. See, I can have a nested try and catch block here. So that way we can achieve it over here. So it does not matter if it's the data here. So just we need to understand. So in an interview, they will definitely ask you, is it possible to have 
nested try and catch block. Yes, see, is it giving me any error here? No, it's possible to have nested try and catch block. And is it possible to have, okay, is it possible to have try and catch block inside finally block here? Is it possible to have try and catch block inside finally block? Yes. So you will all encounter this with respect to file handling. So even nest finally block can have try and catch block. So these are the two interview questions here, which you will generally come across. What is it here? Can we have try and catch block within finally block as well? Yes. Can we have nested try and catch block? Yes. Here. Okay. So this is what we are supposed to understand in today's session here. Okay. Today I didn't want to do much topic here because I, I wanted to do a very, very simple topic. And that topic is nothing but uh, two important methods. What are those two important methods here? Uh, you know, print stack trace will print the complete information about the exception. Get message will print the small uh, message about the exception. And finally block, which gets executed all the time. Okay. So this is all what we are supposed to understand here. Okay. So, and we have a few more things which I have to complete here, such as what are checked, unchecked, and what is throw keyword and custom exception and throw here. Probably in another two sessions, I would be doing a completing exceptions for you here. After that, you know, uh, it becomes easy. I would be left out with only collections, files and threads. Okay. Which I can do it in a very, very quick manner here. Okay. But now I just wanted to do a very small topic. One more small topic, not, uh, I mean, uh, related to exceptions here. A few days back here. Okay. I spoke about something called as methods in spring class. Probably day before yesterday, right? We were talking about string class and I spoke about the various important methods which we have in the string class, such as length, starts with, you know, I mean, starts with, ends with, contains, okay? Uh, what a blah, 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 blah. So many things we saw, right? Similarly, uh, one more method is very important, which I forgot to do here. So I thought I uh, let me do it today, okay? So here, see here, there is something called as string. Okay, string is a data type or a class. Okay, s equals to I write it as Java here. So this is a string object. Okay, this is a string object. So what is happening here? S is pointing to an object. Okay, and that object is nothing but Java here. Okay, I want to convert the string into an array. How will I do it? S is the string object. To, I will convert it to to char array. So S is nothing but the string object. I am converting it to char array, character array, meaning the string got converted to an character array. Okay. How, sir? How can we do it, sir? It's easy, simple. So here, let me show it to you. The string object got converted into a character array. This is J A. B, A, okay, and uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. So S is the string object. It got converted to a character array. And I will give that name for that array that is C. What is the name of that array? The array name is C here. Can you tell me what will be the data type over here? Sir, it is storing characters. So the data type will be char. But since it is storing multiple values here, it's an array. So we have to write char array. Got it. So that's how you are supposed to predict it. Correct. S means it's an object. To char array meaning we are converting the string into an character array. And the name of the array is C. And that's a character array. See, J, A, B, A. It's a character array. So it is char. So this we can identify with the help of C of 0. This is C of 1 and this is C of 2 and this is C of 3 here. Okay, now, now here, if I want to traverse it one by one, 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 what am I supposed to do? Sir, for loop, sir, for open parenthesis close and open curly braces close. Okay, sir, if I want to fetch J, the index position is 0, sir. So I will initialize the value to zero here. Why? Because my requirement is to fetch J, sir. So therefore, I will initialize it to zero, sir. Okay, now. And then I have to traverse it till the end point. 
Now tell me, I should be lesser than C dot. Should I write length or length function? Should I tell I is lesser than C dot length, okay? Or I should write I is lesser than C dot length function, length method. So now tell me, should I use option one or should I use option two? Tell me here. Is it first option or second option? First or second option, you have to tell me the answer, okay? Okay, sir, this is an array. Okay, what is C? C is an array, sir. If it is an array, we have to make use of the keyword called as length. Why? Array does not have any methods at all. Okay, if it was S, it's a string object. So I had to write the job of length method. Okay, so the length method is used for strings and length is used for arrays here. Never ever get confused over here. Length method is used for strings. Length is used for array because array does not have any methods at all. So we have to just write it as length here and slowly I plus plus and I have to write S O P C of I here. I have to just print what C of I. So what is my I value? I value is zero, sir. Very good. Now check the condition, sir. Is 0 lesser than 4, sir? Length means 1, 2, 3, 4. Is 0 lesser than 4, sir? Yes. What is C of 0? C of 0 is J, sir. J will get printed, sir. Control goes back. I plus plus. I value will become 1. I check the condition. Sir, is 1 lesser than 4, sir? Yes. Control comes inside. C of 1. What is C of 1? A. A will get printed. Goes back. I plus plus. I value will become 2, sir. Is 2 lesser than or equal to 4, sir? Yes. Control comes inside. C of 2. What is C of 2? V. We'll get, v will get printed. Control goes back. I plus plus. It will become 3. Is 3 lesser than 4, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Control comes inside. Uh, C of 4. What is C of, sorry, sorry, sorry. C of 3. C of 3 is A. Control goes back. It becomes 4 here. Check the condition. Is 4 lesser than 4? No, stop it. And I have to convert it, traverse it one by one. So, I just wanted to explain how do we convert Okay, I will just tell, I will have a class called as main class and I will have my main method wherein the execution will begin from. Okay, and here, and uh, you know, I will have a string object. See, string s equals to, I will write it as Java. Okay, and I want to convert the string into an array. S dot to char array. See, Converts the string to a new character array. Correct. S dot two char array means the I mean the uh, string object will get converted to two character array. And what is the data type here? Can you see here? It's an char array here. So it returns character array and the name is C. You can give whatever you want. You converted the string object into an array. Okay, character array and this name is C here. And if you want to traverse it one by one, one by one, one by one, you have to make use of for loop. Int i equals to zero. i is lesser than c dot length. Can you see here? It's length, not length function. And i plus plus. And you are just supposed to print it as uh, c of i here. And when I do it, I will get the output here. See, I got the output as j a v a. So how will I reverse a string guys? Very, very important question in your interview perspective here. Sir, how do we reverse a string, sir? Hey, very simple. We are already done with the program here. Okay. So if your string is string s equals to Java. Sir, if it is Java, sir, I want to reverse a string, sir. How? Convert it into an array first. S dot to char array when i tell to char array over here i am converting the string into a character array so what will happen here an array will get created which is storing only characters here the string got converted to a character and the name of the array is ch and that is a char array so now i want to traverse it in the reverse direction okay so this is nothing but ch so i'll make use of for loop okay I want to traverse it in reverse direction. If I want to traverse it in the reverse direction, I have to initialize my i value to 3. I have to initialize it to 3. Why? Because I want to fetch a here. So that can also be written as ch dot length i equals to ch dot length. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 minus 1, it's 
uh, three here. So I should be equal to c h dot length minus one here, meaning it will be pointing to three here. And three is greater than zero. Two is greater than zero. One is greater than zero, and zero is equal to zero. So I should be greater than or equal to zero. And decrementing three to one, three to uh, uh, I mean three to two, it's minus one. Two to one, it's minus one. One to zero, it's minus one. It is gradually decrementing by minus. So I am supposed to print c h of i here. That's it. See, i value is c h dot length minus one. It is three. Is three greater than or equal to zero? Yes. C h of three. What is c h of three? A goes back. It becomes two. Is two greater than or equal to zero? Yes. C h of two. B goes back. It becomes one. Is one greater than or equal to zero? Yes. C h of one goes back. Minus minus becomes zero. Is zero greater than or equal to zero? Yes. C h of zero. That is J and goes back. It becomes minus one. Is minus one greater than or equal to zero? No. Stop it. A B A J. A B A J. I have reversed the string. Uh, got it. So that's how you know we can write uh, the basic logic for reversing a string as well. Okay. So here you can just write it as what C H dot length. Okay. C H dot what? C H dot. Oh, I am not. Uh, this is C. Okay. We'll take it as C only because I've taken it as C. C dot length. Okay. And I should be. Greater than or equal to zero. It should be zero or greater than minus minus. So when I executed, did I get the output as C? Oh, I'm so sorry. The it's uh, C H dot length minus one. Okay, because if I don't do it as minus one, it will be pointing to four. See, did I get the output as J A B A J? If you want it in a single line, make use of print. Print you also you know the difference I believe. Print means the control gets printed on the same line. So A A B A J that way. Here also, if you don't want it, so you can make use of this data here. So here, I'll just take out this entire part here. Okay. So just the control moves to the new line. See, before reversing, it was this. After reversing, it has become this here. So that's how we are supposed to understand how do we reverse and get the clarity about it. Okay. So this is all about the entire session, guys. I just wanted to add this one topic for today. Okay. So probably we were discussing exceptions only. Yesterday we spoke about exceptions, and today we just continued uh, with it. We saw only few concepts. That is two important methods, and finally block. Okay. So I'm just left out with uh, four more sub topics under uh, exceptions. That is checked, unchecked, then uh, throws, custom exception, and throw. So when I do this four topics here, we would be done with exceptions completely, so that it becomes easy going ahead here. Okay. So this is all about the session, guys. Okay. So any confusions as of now here? And one more thing, tomorrow if I take session or not, I'll be updating you uh, by tonight. Okay. If I'm taking, I'll update. If I'm not taking, I will not update. Okay. So like every week here, if I find time, I I let you know, I'll update and I'll take the session. If not. we will be catching up on monday itself okay so there is one question here uh, okay what is it why should we say error is a run time interruption it may occur during compile time or run time here it's simple here we don't have different types of uh, you know errors nothing like that here it's a run time interruption only okay it's not that you can do however you want so you can tell error is a mistake okay Which might occur during compile time. During the execution only it will occur, right? It's not the predefined answer for it. Okay, you can answer it however you wish, but the standard answer everyone will understand easily is error is a runtime interruption. Meaning, it's a problem, it's a blockage, it's an interruption that will occur during execution only. No, when you see if you if it's a command prompt here, if you have to write it, you have to tell Java C blah 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 dot Java. Correct. I am trying to execute the program. That is when I need to compile it, and that is when I need to traverse it. Clear, everyone here. So that's the reason I always tell error is a runtime interruption here, which cannot be handled. Okay, error is a runtime interruption which cannot be handled. But when will there? What are the different types here? You will tell compile time error, runtime error. So that way you can answer it. But generally it occurs here. We don't have types under that. Like checked and unchecked, we don't have types. It's like when does it occur? That's it. Okay, perfect. Okay, great guys. Okay, so any other questions apart from this? Any questions? No. 
right okay great guys okay so make sure practice it okay so probably if i'm taking the session tomorrow i'll do it if not from monday we'll continue and we'll finish the topic okay great guys okay so we shall wind up a session for today and catch up hopefully tomorrow or monday okay so thank you all take care bye bye